What you think you become, what you think you create. The science of the law of attraction attract our thoughts. Law of attraction, which is, you know, never really been formalized in, for the scientific community. So I'm trying to take it and cram it through a neuroscience filter sure. here, and see what comes out the other side. So what about thoughts? What in the world is thinking? Well, in many ways, thinking is a lot like perception. Perception, again, being which sensations I'm focusing on, except that thinking incorporates sensations from the past, sensations from the present, and can include sensations from the future that we haven't even had yet. Yeah. Interesting thing about thinking is it's very hard to control our spontaneous thoughts. So for instance, I can't prevent myself from thinking something. However, I can deliberately introduce a thought that one of our enormous powers is, as human beings is, is another form of top-down control, which is to say, I'm gonna write out my name, I am Andrew, or I can think, I am Andrew. Now it takes a little bit of work, you kind of notice to, to think something specific, like you would write it out in your head, just as you would write it out on paper. It feels like a little bit of work, because it is work. You're taking that spontaneous thought process and you're inserting a thought on top of it. And we know that you can't hold too many thoughts in mind at once. What I will say is that it's hard to suppress thoughts, but it's actually quite easy to introduce thoughts. And it sounds to me like this law is basically a process of introducing thoughts. And when you start introducing thoughts and you start thinking of thoughts as a form of perception, they're gonna shape what you see, very gonna heavily constrain what you see. Beliefs are essentially thoughts that are recurring thoughts. And there's some interesting data that were published in the journal Neuron this last year, not from my group, that show that beliefs actually have their own rewarding quality that there's actually dopamine release associated with beliefs. So when you believe something, there are chemical reward systems in your mind that are associated with just repeating that belief. Now, again, this has a dark side and a light side. The dark side is it means that people can be very fixed in their beliefs and they're actually being chemically rewarded for having the same belief. Well, when people think, oh, I believe that that group of people over there is this way uh, and or good or bad, right? It, it, there's a self-reward mechanism. Mm -hmm. The dopamine system is exceedingly powerful because dopamine is a kind of a dumb molecule. It has no brain of its own. <laughs> it's just a molecule, right? It's just a yeah. chemical. But when dopamine is released in our brain, it tends to orient us towards goals in the outside environment. It's the molecule not just of reward, but of motivation. And when we release dopamine, we tend to see the world in terms of external goals. And so you can imagine now if there's a process built up inside us where our thoughts are causing dopamine release and dopamine is shaping what we see as rewards, what we perceive as rewards, that can be wonderful or terrible. You know, you think about walking in the desert and you're just dying of thirst and all of a sudden you spot a big lake. All of a sudden, you will have the energy to run the remaining mile. <laughs> Whereas before you thought you were gonna die. How is that? How is that? It's not like more gl glycogen is suddenly available. It's not like ketones did it for you. So what did it? That's dopamine. That's mm. dopamine release that says there's a reward waiting for me. And they give the immediate sense of possibility and they promote energy. Epinephrine or adrenaline is a molecule that we're all associated with. It's what gives us energy. But epinephrine is manufactured. It's made from the molecule dopamine. It's wow. a couple biochemical steps, but it's actually made from dopamine. Epinephrine is essentially the basis of neural energy. The, the ability to focus, the ability to be alert, the ability to continue working. So dopamine is kind of the building block of energy. People who are very depressed, who see no possibility in the world. If you talk to a depressed person, every response they give is going to be, but it's not gonna work out. Absolutely yeah. certain that things are gonna turn out bad. Typically depressed states have very low dopamine. At the opposite extreme is mania. When people are in a manic phase, <laughs> dopamine is very high, we know this, and they see possibility everywhere and there's certain things are gonna work out. They will spend money, they'll create relationships they don't have time and energy for, they will overdo everything. And so somewhere in the middle is this healthy range where we realize that how we view the world is shaping the release of these chemicals. And I do believe this happens when we have positive thoughts, we get a lift. If we, if we can get a lift from our positive thoughts and then dopamine itself puts us in 
relationship with the outside world such that we view the outside world as having more possibility, that is going to put us into forward momentum. There are a lot of studies to support that. When dopamine is low, we tend to see very little possibility in the world. And the key with positive thinking is that it has to be honest. I don't have an Olympic gold medal. If I could tell myself I'm going to get one tomorrow, but I just don't have the skill. So that's not going to release dopamine in my system. So one thing to understand is that dopamine release in the brain is always subjective. So if I say to myself, I'm going to get into the process of doing something. If you attach the dopamine release to the process of effort or goal setting itself, you'll have more energy to be an effort. And then if you can attach dopamine release to the belief that you're at least heading in the right direction, you'll have more energy to keep going in the right direction. People make the mistake of thinking that positive thought process should be attached to the finish line. It's not about thinking you've already won. It's not about being delusional. Positive thinking is not about being delusional. Positive thinking is about learning how to take control of internal processes and understanding that that will shape your external environment. But it's about remaining in control of the internal landscape. Mm. It's about knowing that despite shifts in the external landscape, you're gonna be okay. It's about thinking that your training is gonna take you to the finish line. And so it's about moving that <clears throat> mental horizon in more close and then triggering some sort of positive internal representation of what you're doing, meaning thinking positive. And people, this is usually where I get stopped and people say, wait, but it sounds so subjective. Tell me exactly how to do it. It's supposed to be subjective. Everyone needs to figure out what allows them to continue to be in forward momentum, what allows them to, to constrain the world of possibilities and to go after goals and how often to self reward. But the key is the self word, because if you start only pursuing external rewards, that's when you are no longer in control of your dopamine system, which is yes, everybody, including me, it is possible that you can do everything and still fail. No one wants to say that, but the way that you ensure against that is to attach reward to the effort process because the dopamine molecule creates a sense of certainty and you're not trying to create certainty about the final outcome. You're trying to create certainty only about the next outcome that's en route to the final mm. outcome. Think about milestones. Yeah. There's a lot of kind of treacherous thinking around goal setting and dopamine and things. There's this idea that if we're really amped up, that we're just gonna have jet thrusters that are gonna take us to the end. But the key is to move that horizon in closer and closer. And a way that one could do this, for instance, would be you get up in the morning, or let's say you're kind of low energy in the afternoon, that you do your breathing to get more alert, but you've got this voice of doubt. There's like a voice of doubt. Is this working? I don't know, I don't know. Remember, you can introduce thoughts on top of that. You're not gonna get very far trying to suppress the, these thoughts. The better thing to do is just kind of swamp them with, with positivity. positive thought. Not think about the negative thought. Add positive yeah. thinking and possibilities right. and opportunities into your, your thinking. That's right. But trying to suppress the negative thoughts is like whack-a-mole. They just keep popping up all <laughs> over the place. And, you know, it's, and it's a lot of work. But there is a way to play a slightly different game. I think that the in learning how to think positively and register the positive feelings that come from that, and then you use that as a way to propel to the, the next mm -hmm. goal. We have to remember that this mechanism of dopamine and pathfinding to goals is in every animal, humans, dogs, sheep, any animal that needs to forage for things, to for find food, food or water, yeah. they don't just get that dopamine release at the end, they get it when they realize they're on the right track. So a grazing animal might be on a really barren landscape and then smell something off of the environment. Now that was an external pull or think, you know what, I'm gonna go that way because I don't know, I need to go some way. They go some direction and they don't smell water, which animals can do. And then all of a sudden they get a little bit of scent of water. At that point, that's when the dopamine is released, not when they get the water and drink from it. So that puts them in energy to get there. Yes. And so people set out with, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write the great American novel, or I'm going to you know, get the IPO. And of course, that's an important, you need to have a sense of what the finish line would actually look like. But the more that one can attach this subjective release of dopamine process to the intermediate steps through positive thinking and action, positive thinking and action, the higher that probability goes toward, in science we say there's a probability of zero to one, the higher that probability goes to one, which is certainty. When I hear about you know athletes or fighters, I was certain I was gonna win. We all know that there's a 0. 0.00000 doubt 
in everybody, 0 0.00, whatever that is. Now, for some people, they might be able to push that number way, way out. But certainty about outcome is actually a form of delusion. <laughs> the silver lining in this is that when you create certainty about outcomes, you know you can control, you take over this neurobiological system, and you create almost certainty that you will complete the process to the end goal perfectly.